Okay. So now I'm sitting on so your seat. So Ping An, I mean, first time I heard about this institution, or is it a company? Maybe you can introduce Finlieb, and we know, of course, as Germans quite well in Berlin. Yes. But let's start with Ping An. Please introduce yourself. All right, great. Um, Ping An, largest insurance company in the world by market cap. A lot of people outside of China have not heard of us because largest we are- Largest Chinese company by market cap. Largest insurance company insurance. in the world by market cap. What um, is their market cap? Uh, something around 200 billion. 200 billion. Uh, yes, that would be US dollars. Close to euros. Um, the, uh, I, I guess that why you, you, Marco, probably already noticed that I am not Chinese because I can tell you're a keen observer of people. And I guess why, why I work at Ping An is not because it is a gigantic insurance company, which it is. It's because it's much more than that. Um, Ping An, many, many, it was only started 30 years ago, but in the last 10 years has elected to reinvent itself with a real focus on financial technology and healthcare. And so in the course of doing that, we, we have incubated a whole collection of digital ecosystems uh, focused on automotive, on real estate, on healthcare, on financial services, and we have built a collection of businesses ourselves like Ping On Good Doctor, which is the world's largest telemedicine platform. We have about 250 million users on that platform, and that's publicly listed now. Uh, we have a business called Auto Home, which is China's leading uh, online car marketplace and is publicly listed with about a $10 billion market cap. We have a business called Lufax, which is, by our reckoning, the world's largest wealth management business. And so we've collected all of these uh, ecosystems, and we use these to feed our core financial services business. So I'm excited to work at Ping An because it represents, to my mind, a, a reimagining of what a traditional financial services business ought to become if it's going to position itself for the wave of digital ecosystems that are sweeping the world. So that's what I, that's what I do. That's where I work. And is it government-owned? Uh, our largest single shareholder is a Thai agribusiness company. Um, one, of the, one of the reasons Ping An, I think, was so successful was that it was not a state-owned company. Interesting. So Ping An was started in Shenzhen by our current uh, chairman and CEO 30 years ago. We were a marine insurer when we started, and we, ha we had to compete against very, very large, very sometimes clunky state-owned businesses in China. So our DNA is much more private sector it than it is state like anything. It sounds like capitalism as we know in China. Capitalism with Chinese characteristics is how we put <laughs> of it. Of course. Um, and I guess you use now the surplus, the, the cash, yes. to fuel the growth for the future, and you're making big bets. I think it's the most exciting times ever with all these new technologies coming. That's why we have these 10 verticals. And then how did you find Ramin, or did Ramin find you? Well, I think it is a fascinating time to be working at Ping On. It is a fascinating time for fintech. When we invest abroad, we, we invest for one of three reasons. We invest because we're going to be able to give somebody a distribution uh, story in China that they wouldn't otherwise have. We're, we might invest because we're going to be a big anchor user of some product or service within China. Or sometimes we invest because we see a like-minded collection of talented individuals somewhere else in the world, and we see the opportunity to accelerate their growth by investing and by deploying our own collection of 29,000 data scientists and other technology resources to make things grow faster abroad. And when we saw Finleap, when we saw Ramin, we saw a like-minded uh, institution with a track record of success. We thought there was going to be an opportunity to build things together, to build things better uh, jointly, and that was what led us to invest. Yeah, but what, what I, what we I liked more than anything else was so, so often in fintech land, there's this you know, tremendously antagonistic worldview that entrepreneurs seem to have in respect of how they interact with traditional financial services incumbents. And something we, we always really admired about the business Ramin has built is the idea that it would be a collaborative enterprise. He has a, a history of reaching out and partnering with traditional financial institutions. Yeah. That feels like the right way to go, and we're happy to be one of those financial institutions now. We call it the champions, partner with the challengers. But what I find interesting here, you are a platform, right? You are kind of are. hatching your bets, right? Yeah. And then Finleap, I mean, Ramin, talk a little bit about Finleap. You are an incubator yourself. So it's yeah, very we, interesting. It, thanks. So, so we prefer the word ecosystem. Ecosystem. Uh, yeah. But, um, and that, that's one, one, of the, one of the things that, um, which is not so easy to grab. Yeah? You're, you're an investment banker at heart. Uh, Don is an investment banker at heart. And explaining an ecosystem to investment bankers is not... So oh no, easy. Noah's an ecosystem also. Yeah, so you get it. One of the things we love about Noah also. <laughs> don't get it, so that's why I'm here. But a lot of, and so the, the, the overarching value of an ecosystem, the interconnection between different services, different companies, which 
in its core are standalone, but that the, there's a, something bigger which can create synergies and effects um, and with this ecosystem to really treat it open. And what are you providing to your, uh, I call them portfolio companies, probably not right. When the, the biggest challenge for every startup is talent. So we're providing a lot of uh, talent flow, a lot of talent. Talent, flow. capital for sure. Capital for sure, but uh, there's other capital. Operations, do you do there? Yeah, we HR do the back payroll. Office. We do the back office. The, the back the, office. Yeah, so, and um, we do a lot of um, business development and sales as well. Um, we have good access to a lot of industry players. And How many people work at Finleap? So the whole, the, everyone, every company is together is 850. Finleap, it's about 90. 90. 90. 90. And yeah. then with Solaris Bank and all your Solaris subsidiaries. Bank yeah, Element. We have we have three companies which actually are all Buffin licensed, fully regulated, balance sheet, but um, truly tech at heart. And how often you two interact? Is there, I mean, I don't know, is it disclosed? How, how substantial are you as an investor? Is it like a b meaningful minority or is it? Uh, I, I would say a meaningful minority is the right way to put it. Uh, I'm, I'm lucky to act as the chairman of Finleap. And uh, how often do we talk? Well, I think you, you and I were on the phone the day of your wedding, Ramin. Yeah. So it's a pretty, uh, a pretty frequent dialogue. That <laughs> Maybe we you have. ask you for a wedding speech idea. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> you didn't ask. Maybe no, you should no. have. No, we didn't. <laughs> that, apropos that, Oscar Hartmann, who came, came a lot to know, when he did the deal with Klaus Hommels, he actually canceled his honeymoon <laughs> to do the deal. That was the most, the most extreme. <laughs> okay, so what, Finley, what type of segments or areas are you excited about? And how do entrepreneurs who think of, fun, of fi founding companies with you, setting up companies with you, um, yeah, tell us a little bit how you work, how you find your your ideas, or are they being brought to you? Because the the model when when Jan Beckers told me about first FinLeap, I was like, oh, another guy who wants to do fintech now. But you guys executed extremely well. Um, what what's next for you? What, what are you heading at? So. We did a lot of B2B technology, and I think it's there also where we add a lot of value. Um, the, the, the services we provide and the network we provide, as I mentioned before, definitely come to into play when it comes to B2B technologies plays. However, um, as you could read in the one or the other articles, we also look a little bit more in uh, the B2C models now, as we believe we now have built in a lot of companies we own the foundation um, to really uh, drive a financial distribution platform directly in the B2C market forward. Um, we have the partners um, uh, to do so. Um, we have the product providers who are willing um, to build more transparent and uh, more integrated products. So yeah, we're also looking now in the financial distribution game. We're looking in a more uh, single European payment area. It's a shame that IBAN is still not working everywhere. Um, but yeah, it's B2B tech and um, still at the core of Finleap. And wh wh why do you think so many Asian investors, I mean SoftBank, we had I think six SoftBank portfolio companies presenting here. I can't recall one deal of a European investor buying a hot uh, FinLeap of Asia. Is there any like other way around um, partnership? It looks like the Asian investors are really picking our best startups in Europe. I mean, we have more Asian investors than we have German investors. We have uh, the largest Chinese insurance company. We have the largest Thai company, the, the Japanese Development Bank, um, <laughs> and a lot of them. I think they understand an ecosystem value more than European investors. And you have, you know, you put them your money where your mouth is. It's, it's very different. Are, what, are you looking for new deals? We have, I think, 500 speakers here. Any <laughs> typical things you are interested in? Uh, we are always looking for new deals, so yes. And I, I guess that we, we sometimes struggle with uh, solely consumer-facing stories, so we, we are, I think, more enamored with ecosystem stories. We're more enamored of B2B stories, uh, marketplaces. I think these, these kinds of opportunities are ones that we find, I think, more appealing. And healthcare is another sector. So it's fintech, healthcare, those are the two most important ones. That's right. 
That's right. And uh, you know, it's, it's fascinating in China, the, the nature of healthcare is just entirely different from what you might be used to in Europe, what I would be used to in the United States. There is no network of primary care clinics that you might be used to here. So if, if your daughter has a sniffle and you want to get her checked out, you have to take her to a tier one hospital in China. There is a giant queue. Those hospitals are incredibly overburdened and the nosocomial infection rates are such that if she wasn't sick going in, she'll be sick going out. So there's a tremendous need to reimagine the entire nature of the healthcare delivery system and value proposition to end consumers. That's something Ping on very, very focused on, part of why we do good doctors. Do they allow distant healthcare? Can the doctor do it remotely, which is a big debate in Europe. We have these companies, Doc Planner, Dr. Lip, and everybody thinks, okay, one day they can actually use the doctors to offer healthcare services online directly, but regulation hasn't opened up for this. Is it possible oh, in China? Oh, well, absolutely. There's, uh, so Ping on Good Doctor has 200 and 250, more than 250 million users. We have uh, 55 million, I think, monthly active users on Ping on Good Doctor alone. So these people are, are coming for these consultations. It's great for doctors also, because if you are a doctor who that's went to school to study, to study uh, neuroscience, and that's what you wanted to do, you don't want to sit in your, in your office and deal with anyone who comes in. A nice thing about having a telemedicine and platform that is relatively sophisticated is that we can take the people who might have neurological disorders and pass them to you. You feel more fulfilled than you would if you were just in a, a GP office somewhere. Uh, if Ramin is the guy who specializes in gastrointestinal issues, we can pass those cases to him. And we can utilize AI to do triaging to make sure that we, we route people with different levels of severity to the, to the right people in, in the right order of priority. So uh, big business in China, I think it will get only bigger. Doesn't sound like an insurance company to you, to me. It sounds like, you know, when SoftBank started as a telecom operator a long time ago, and now it's this gigantic platform. Um, are, you, are you interested in opening more verticals? You're putting a billion to work. Will that grow over time? Uh, I think it will absolutely grow over time, and I would absolutely agree with you. There is no better way to annoy the management team of Ping On than to refer to us as an insurance company. Absolutely our roots, but I think we think of ourselves as a technology company more than anything else today. You are not reluctant to change. That's the most important thing we can learn in Europe from the Asians. And uh, Ramin uh, got his feet more than wet here. And <laughs> congratulations for this important partnership, and I wish both of you very well. And Thank Come you, back Margaret. to Noah. We may show you some interesting companies. All right. Thank you so much, Rami. Good luck for Finley. Thank you. And safe travels. Thank you. Thank you. Marco, thanks for coming. Appreciate it.